Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Thursday, July 25th. We got some early Major League Baseball action. I'm going to have to be quick today. Got to get down to the airport. Got a lot of guys coming in this weekend. Football's around the corner. Everybody wants to fund those accounts. Everyone wants to get down in Vegas, but to do that, you got to get capital into the accounts or I can't fire for you. So uh, a lot of guys will be flying in over the next week or two. Spending a couple days here trying to sign up for contests. So it's going to be a busy few days. We had a lot of action, a lot of baseball action, MMA. And like I said, getting ready for all those football and football futures. Now we're coming off a break even night. I think we may have even won a little bit. There's two tennis bets that have not been graded that went 2-0 and still in the system. I'll take it. No, no blood, no foul like they say. And uh, just going to move on to the next day. So we're kind of sitting at the same as far as results go. We don't win, don't lose, break even night. Got to keep it going. Got to keep it moving. The grind continues. The grind continues. And uh, we're getting ready. We're getting ready for what's coming up. Now, with that said, got to get you into action quickly uh, because there's a lot of early Major League Baseball. Now, we already got down on some games that started. So let me give you some others real quickly. I'm going to give you 962 Toronto. Uh, they're good up until minus 110. Uh Definitely should be about a minus 140, 150 favorite where they win this game six out of 10 times against Tampa, who now has gotten back to 500. Uh, but this is the perfect storm for recency bias when you look at the pitch and matchup. You look at Bradley, I think he's given up zero earned runs in back to back starts. And I look at Bassett, he's given up five earned runs in his last start. His recency bias. I like Toronto at home. There's still a couple games under 500. So let's go with Toronto and then let's go with one more dog. Um, Let's go with one more underdog today. Let's go with the White Sox. Washington let the wise guys down yesterday. They came back with them today. We'll see what happens. Um, that one's still early, but they also do have the White Sox. White Sox on the money line. White Sox first five money line and first five run line. So we took about minus plus 220 on the money line. We took about 200 on the first five money line. We got to get plus 125, 130 for plus a half a run on the first five. So those are two Major League Baseball plays for you. One, actually, we diversified as far as the total goes. Um, as far as the side goes on the White Sox and the first five, and then we have Toronto money line. So there's some free premium play action for you. Toronto was a 3% play. The White Sox money line was a 3% play, and the first five was cut up into 2% and 2%. Obviously, you guys have been following me long enough. You know I work with a 20% risk of ruin where I will double my bank a little greater than eight out of 10 times, lose it a little less at two out of 10 times. And uh, so far it's proven to be correct. We've turned the profit either the last nine years. We're down about 20, 25% of starting bankroll for 2024. Still more than enough time to turn that around like we did last year and finished up over 80% in profit. As far as the starting bankroll goes, we increased it by that much. So it's what we do. We grind. Numbers don't lie. Just numbers do not lie. That's the bottom line. You look at a, a big enough sample size with statistical significance, ACE is going to be up. Over a short-term random sample size, come on, the biggest square could be up. That don't mean anything. We want the big numbers. We want the big numbers. All right. So, Washington started. White Sox I gave you. Toronto I gave you. All right. We're good there. Let's get to some questions so we can get out of here. A couple questions. What did someone say? Yanni took the Washington National. Geez, horrible. Look, I explain that. that. That means nothing. Like, we know a team sucks on paper. Of course, the favorite's going to look better than the dog. But give us some reasoning why that line's off. Not like, okay, Washington sucks. If it was that, we just bet the better team every time and get rich. Like, how, how hard is that? We, we usually know who the better team is every night, right? But how much better are they? That's the difference. And tonight, how much better are they going to be? Especially with that randomness and short sample sizes. Got to look at this a lot different, guys. Got to start approaching this as a market and stop looking at it as a sports fan. Quit watching Sports Center and start reading about statistics. I swear to you, that hour you wasted watching Sports Center, if you just took 30 minutes of that and read a, a college level statistics books, you're going to understand so much more about probability, about long term, the law of big numbers, things that are really going to make you a more profitable sports better. Watching Sports Center is not going to do that.
because your job isn't to predict winners. It's not to predict outcomes. You can't do that. Nobody can do that. That's not possible. It's just not. Um, or else be psych- you'd be psychic. And if you're psychic, what the hell are you wasting your time betting freaking baseball games for? Like, there's so much better things you could do if you actually can predict the future. But you don't bet in sports for. Um, so, yeah, nobody can do that. Don't waste your time. Stop trying to do that. I, I, I wasted about 10 years of my life thinking I was going to pick winners. And then I worked for like this one betting syndicate that was so cool because I got close with um, the top guys and shit because they were from the East Coast, too, when I came out here. Anyway, make a long story short. They right away is the first thing they told me when I started talking about a matchup. They're like, dude, shut up, shut up, shut up. None of that matters. None of that matters. We bet numbers. We don't bet teams. We bet numbers. We do not bet teams here. So take that shit somewhere else. No one gives a shit about your opinion on the outcome. We want to know about that inefficient market price and why it's inefficient. That's all they care about. So yeah, they're going to bet Washington. They're going to bet Miami. They're going to bet the White Sox. They're going to bet those bad teams when the line's a lot higher than it should be. But yes, when you take a plus 200, you need to know going in that even during your hottest, hottest, hottest runs, you're still going to throw that ticket out six out of 10 times. So even when you're running your best, like you are seeing everything so perfectly clear and you're at your hottest streak, when you bet a plus 200, you need to be prepared to throw that ticket out six out of 10 times. If you're not prepared to do that, don't bet a plus 200 because that's what the math shows. Your edge isn't that great. So at a plus 200, your break even is 33% implied win probability. If you're clicking at a 40% rate, meaning you're 7% above its implied win probability, which the market has, you're crushing it. You're in the top 0.1% of sports bettors on the planet, not here in this country, everywhere. So believe me when I tell you, um, edges is what winning bettors are looking for, not predicting outcomes. So please, please, please. Start to approach it, look at it a little bit differently. Look at it a little bit differently. All right, got to pull this microphone. Yeah, I was told about that. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I like this. Recreational player says, Ace, give us an angle that used to exist, but books figured it out. I'm gonna, you're going to love it. Ready? It was for years. Bet the home dog on Monday Night Football. Home dog on Monday Night Football. Home dog on Monday Night Football. That was one of those that, you know, you just took and long, you know, it had a, it had a decade of, of profit um, because if a, a team was favored on the road, they were really good. If you're favored on the road, that means you're really good. You got to take out home field advantage and then you're favored on top of that. So obviously you're really good. Those teams usually get public backing. So they would juice that favorite side higher than it should be. What happens when that's the case? If you shade towards the biases, it's going to cash more tickets against the biases. So there were more dogs than favorites covering for a long time. And as long as the, the market remained unsophisticated and kept betting those road favorites, there was no reason for the market to correct itself. It was doing what it's meant to be. Markets are vehicles of extracting money from the inpatient and transferring it to the patient. So that's exactly what was happening there. There was nothing wrong. So, uh, yeah, be careful with that. One other thing I want to answer because I, I one question I do want to answer, and it's uh, Alex Alex Long sent in uh, a message, and uh, I, I really want to take a second and answer his questions. If you guys don't mind, I just got to figure out how to use my Instagram without my girl. Alex Long, here you go. Okay, okay, here he goes. Here's his question. He watches the show. I appreciate it. He's bet his betting's been his sole income for three and a half years, mainly in game, but he's learning pregame. That's awesome. In games, that's what they're trying to do here. So you're 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 ahead of the, the curve when it comes to betting. Um, because that's what they're trying to do here in the States. I talked about that on a, a previous video. That's what in Europe, 90% of the action does come after tip off after the game start. Um, they're trying to do that here. They get more action doing that way. Uh, for the first two and a half years, I would take my winnings and only dump in the pit because I just kind of had a problem with drinking. Doesn't help. Last night, I slipped for the first time in so long. I'm so mad at myself. 
but I know I'll get over it in another 12, 24 hours max. Please, any type of advice you can give me on how to get back on the path of only plus EV betting and staying away from the stupid shit. Thanks for your time and, and thank you for the work you put in. Thank you, sir. Bro, this is so important, Alex. That's why I, I wanted to make sure I took a second and and gave you the time that this question deserves because everybody that's watching this, if they bet sports, has gone through it. If you've ever bet sports for more than a day, you've gone through this where you've done the wrong, you've, you've made a mistake and you know you've done the wrong thing. Like once you've bet long enough, and especially like Alex, who's been plus EV for three plus years, you know what to do. You know what's right. You know what's not right. It's like I talk about the analogy of the six pack. I know how to get a six pack. I could Google how to get a six pack. And within hours, I could write a comprehensive plan that if I follow this plan to the letter, I will have a six pack. But do I have the discipline to follow this to the letter? Am I going to cut carbs out from my freaking diet? Am I going to intake that much water a day? Am I going to work out this many days a week? Am I going to do this much uh, cardio to burn any kind of fat? Am I going to work on my abs four or five times a week? Like if I'm not willing to do those things, I don't deserve to have the six pack. Even though I know how to get it. If you know how to be a plus EV sports better, and you're not doing it, it's the exact same thing. I did that for a decade, Alex. I had access to winning information. I was a mover, a runner on the strip during the heyday of being a runner. Late 90s. There was nothing, no better job if you want to be the, have information, winning information in your hands. You couldn't have had a better job to have access to winning information. You moved the markets back then. Uh, Stardust was the, the, the sports betting capital of the world. Every original line came out from the Stardust. I was stationed at the Stardust. I was there when they brought out the first line. The first person that saw the line before the whole rest of the world, I was there when they posted that line. I was one of the first people in the world that would see the opening line every single day. Every single day. That was my job. Not like I was special. That's just where they positioned me because I was really good at what I did. Um, anyway, so what I'm talk, trying to get to, Alex, is this. You're going to make mistakes. Even when you know what to do, the key is, can you minimize the amount of times you make that mistake? Can you correct instead of repeat? Now you're saying you slipped up and this is the first time in a long time. You should be proud of yourself that that happened. And that money that you lost, that's the price of the education. You do get taxed in this business. Whether you like it or not, you're going to get taxed. You're going to get taxed for ignorance. You're going to get taxed for action. You're going to tax for being square. It, it, it doesn't, nobody survives it. Nobody's going to make mistakes and beat this market. The edge is so small. Everything you do has to reflect the winning sports better. It's like the six pack. It's very hard to achieve. Men, I'm, the majority of my viewers are men. Now the, the female viewership has continued to grow and I love it. More women are getting into sports betting and love betting sports. Shit, my girl's already handicapping the MMA card for this weekend. Like she's already planning her bets. I, I like that. I like seeing that. Uh, more people doing it. But for entertainment, obviously, for recreation. That's mm -hmm. good for sharp people like us. The more recreational bettors there are in the marketplace, the more inefficient the marketplace will become because when the participants are unsophisticated, the market's going to be less efficient. That's just how it works. Um, and that's what we want as sharper sports bettors. But getting back to Alex's question, you have to forgive yourself. You can't keep beating up yourself. You do beat up yourself if you continue to repeat it. But if you're telling me you haven't done this in a month, two months, six months, a year, and you just fell off that wagon and messed up, whether it was drinking, whether it was chasing, whether it was a big bill coming up or a big, I think coming up that you needed capital for and you bet a little more than you should have, but it was at the wrong time and you lost more than you should. Any kind of shit like that. You know what to do, Alex. You know what's right and what's wrong. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Put on your big boy pants. Pick yourself back up and do the fucking job. Do the job. That's it. Just do the job. You know what the job is. You messed up. We all mess up. And when we mess up, it costs us. It should cost us. That's how we learn. Like the way you learned that a stove is hot is you had to touch it. Your mom might have told you, your dad might have told you, your brother might have told you. But until you touch that stove, you're not going to know. You're just taking someone else's word for it. That's okay. That's okay. 
You learn not to touch it again. Same, Alex. The same. You suck it up. You take it. You admit to yourself, I deserved it because I did the wrong thing and I shouldn't be rewarded for doing the wrong thing. And if I do the right thing over and over and over again, I will get rewarded. It'll take time, but I will be rewarded. So like I said, please don't take this as disrespect. I say this out of, out of experience and out of empathy and caring and love. Bro, pick yourself up, put on your big boy pants, and you lost some money that you shouldn't have lost. Get back on track. Wake up. That's over. That's done. Let it go. You got taxed for the error. Remember that next time so you don't touch the stove. Remember, now you know it's hot and you know how you feel when you do this. If you don't like this feeling, don't fucking do it. That's, that's me. That's, that's, tr- that's hard, hard love. That's true love. That's letting you know that, listen, bro, I, I could tell you what you want to hear. That's not going to happen. I'm going to tell you how it is and how it is. Alex, you knew better. You knew better and you still gambled. You took the shot to gamble. Now, whether you were in the right frame of mind or not is irrelevant. The bottom line is you took a chance, you gambled. And what happened to you is what happens to most people to gamble. They lose. So let's stop gambling and let's get back to business. Let's get back to treating it like a business so it pays us like a business. Because if we're going to gamble, then we expect the results of gamblers. Sometimes you get hot. Sometimes you get cold. Sometimes you get crushed. Sometimes you get buried. Sometimes you get lucky. If you want those kind of odds and results, have at it. But if you want consistent profits, then you know what to do. It's a grind. It's a grind. This isn't for everybody. I told you. It's the one industry where you can work a whole month, seven days a week, and actually not not, not make money, but actually lose money. Where you work every day for a whole month, and you actually lost money doing it. Dude, most people aren't built for that, to be able to, to, to accept that. And, and and do well. So don't be too hard on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Instead, be proud of yourself if you pick yourself up and you don't let it happen again. And you remember this and you put a post it like this. See, like I did. Like I did. See what I said? Answer Alex Long on IG. I didn't leave this the chance whether I was going to remember because I probably wouldn't have remembered. So when I do, I put a post it and I leave it in front of me. That's what I do. And I have all kind of posts it around here. See against that wall, there's a post it. Those are reminders for me. Some of them are just quotes. Some are just quotes, but I need to remind myself so that I correct, not repeat. Because we're all human, Alex. We're all human, bro. So stop beating yourself up. You know what to do. You've done it for three and a half years. You know what happens when you gamble. It happened to you again. So stop gambling. Get back to business and let's make some money. You're going to make it back. It's just money. What did you lose? What did you lose? The sun came up, bro. And tomorrow, it's going to come up again. And the day after that, it's going to come up again. So wake up, getting ready to take advantage of the day. No feeling sorry for ourselves here. And we don't lie to ourselves either. We keep it real. Tell you when I win and I tell you when I lose. I can't, I can't control the timing of when I'm going to win and when I'm going to lose. The only thing I could control is that I place good bets and that I trust in my long-term results. And those results are profit eight of the last nine years. And yet I make mistakes every single year, Alex. And I try to correct, not repeat, correct, not repeat, and get better, get better, get better every single day. That's what you need to do. God bless you. I love you guys. Thank you for the support. Smash that like button. Hit me with a comment. Hit me with a question. Sorry, I didn't have too much time today to go through a lot more. GLD, GLD, superiority beings, GLD, GLD. Yeah, you could do, you could, you can now have a Roth IRA with actual physical gold. So you may want to look into that instead of paper gold. You could, you could look into physical gold where you could have a a, a IRA that actually has physical gold. Check that out. Check that out. And I highly recommend everyone take advantage of an IRA. Trust me, taxes are going to crush you, crush you, crush you. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Do some.